interested in the flesh. What's the black robes of the Gali priest in their courts? What is their job? Who wears black robes? Who, who carries a scythe? The grim reaper. What's a reaper do? The reaper of souls. The Gali priest, the reaper of souls from Ur. Yes, it is souls that is the most valuable. And once a soul is salvaged, where do they put it? They invented the ritual of putting it into gold, but putting it into bars. People say to this that we're talking about tonight, look, I understand about the history of central banks, fine. I understand a little bit about the Hyksos. I'm not too sure about the origin of gold, but this stuff about gold being a cursed prison of souls is too much. And people say that. Say it's just too much. It's, it's, it's people just taking their, their ideas and their imagination and going far too far. We'll ask you to look at the image on the front page of the article, Gold Equals Cursed Prisons of Souls. Credit Swiss bar of gold. Number on it. Okay? Don't look at that number, the way it's printed there. Turn it upside down. Tell me what it says. That's right. It says 6.666. Oh, well. Some would say what a coincidence. <clears throat> Same as people seeing Jesus in a piece of toast in Mexico and thousands of people flocking. Well, Gold doesn't have to be 99.9. It could be 95.5. It could be 35.2. It could be 100. It, it has to be. Gold bars have to be listed as 99.9. No one thinks about it. And yet there it is. That is what you're dealing with. Now, if you want to perpetuate that system, if you want to support the goals of the bankers this year, if you want to repeat the mistakes of those before us as they have been done over and over and over again, then keep doing what you're doing. Keep promoting lawful money. Keep promoting the lies they're teaching us about gold. And ignore everything I've said so far tonight. Ignore it all. Treat it as complete rubbish. But if you want to make a change, if you want to stop them in their tracks, if you want to give them pause, do not be the unwilling, unconscious, or even willing servant of the bankers in supporting their goals and promoting what they're doing this year. Instead, Help us prove that gold does not need to be underwriting currency. In fact, I'll make a comment to all of you tonight. Given these clinically insane people have learned absolutely nothing, given they have shown complete disregard to Eucadia and what is being said, and I have this on, on good authority, that they absolutely believe nothing, which I have to say to you, is contrary to the Jesuits. And please don't be fooled if you think that I'm talking about the Jesuits and the Venetians. There is a split between these people. These people have no redemption. They trashed their own covenant in the 40s where they burnt 6 million people. They claimed that Lucifer came to earth, which is a complete lie. They claimed that they were free of the Talmud and so they no longer had to live in ghettos. They took control of the banks. They control the media that have controlled the world and said, we will live as we've always dreamed now. We will not follow the mysteries and the mythologies and the superstitions of our parents. We will live as we believe we are, gods, with all you sheep. Well, 70 years has proven that these people aren't even competent to tie up their own shoelaces. If gold is the tool that they want to use, then absolutely, in the structure of Eucadia, in the covenant of one heaven, gold as a medium to underwrite shall be rendered worthless. No one that adheres to Eucadia or the covenant, no one will be permitted to use gold as a medium of value. It is rendered worthless. Why? So long as these people can use the gold the way they have for millennia, there is always a chance 
they will corrupt a society again in 50, 100, 1,000 years, even if we succeed, as we will. So all their gold in Zurich ultimately shall be rendered worthless. And if someone says, how can you do that? I give you some words from a man 2,000 years ago. You cannot serve two masters. If you wish to serve the gods of gold, then go and support the bankers. Go out, out yourself, support them. But if you believe in the divine, if you believe that the time has come to end this madness, then gold is going to be rendered worthless, utterly worthless. And those changes will be permeated right throughout the model. Now, I know I've spent a fair bit of time on that, and I'm sorry that I've covered that subject more than the others. So I'm going to switch gears now. We're going to talk a bit about some of the updates. So thank you all for your patience on allowing me to talk through those points. So on foreclosures, I just want to say a couple of things because I know that a number of you, well, I know that this is a major issue for many, many people. And I know that a number of you have been trying different solutions and, and finding, well, as predicted, some resistance. So I want to make one point first clear, and that is some strength with foreclosures in the ecclesiastical deed process. You think about the title that you were given for the property that you purchased and the property you felt you owned. The title was in your name. That's the name that is on the slave roll. That's the name that they are claiming they own. So when you issue now with the new updates on the register in be able to pull off your liveborn record if you register yourself in and those features are now available on one heaven at uh, register so you go to one hyphen heaven o and e hyphen heaven and go to the section on register and you'll see two buttons now the, the ability to register yourself and the ability to call up your liveborn record when you follow through now with the updated ecclesiastical deed system and challenge their title which is exactly what you're doing then under the principles of trust law and commercial law the law that they are required to use as it is contested title no clerk has permission to convey the property they can't to convey property on contested title is an extreme dishonor a criminal act by a clerk so in addition to the suggestions that have been made to you all and are written into the canons that explain that if you are able to keep a record, even if your bank refuses, and they will, even if the clerk refuses, so long as you get it in the negative, that you have attempted to pay a consideration for every month in arrears, albeit minimum, matched against an honest appraisal of your financial affairs, then no court, even if it is in through a court, no, uh, on appeal, no entity in the world can claim that you are delinquent. Now, add to that contesting of the title, they have two problems now. They cannot declare you de delinquent, so they can't declare you're in dishonour, and they certainly can't convey the property arbitrarily because you're contesting the title. Why? Because you are claiming your rights through to the vital statistics. So I add that point into you with one more thing. I have been promising that there will be updates on the notes on foreclosures, and there will be. And I, in particular, understand that. In particular, I understand that having material there on how to present your receipt, how to present your affidavit, how to present the affidavit for the clerk if they refuse to take the money. These are all tools that you all need. So I'm, I promise you all that those things will be up on the site. I said that in a week's time, but I'll, please give me one more week and we'll have those up. Moving on, let's talk about some of the updates on the ecclesiastical D. And if I've missed something, please, when we get to questions, please ask me and I'll see if I can uh, help you on any question on foreclosures. So on ecclesiastical deeds, um, there have been continual updates on that, and I hope you've all had a chance to go and have a look. And in particular, please keep an eye out for updates on the 
frequently asked questions because as questions are asked, like I can't find Robin Blue, Robin Ink Blue paper, well it's just a name. I mean it's pastel, this is the colour. Some people call it blue, some call it sky blue. So I, I have answered those as updates to the frequently answered questions. So go in and just keep track of that because when questions are asked on the forums and enough people have asked them, then uh, there are updates on those to, to help all of you. And of course the other, the other issue that, that comes about is a number of you have started the process already with the courts and a number of you have immediate court matters where it's not apparent that the ecclesiastical deed now geared towards vital statistics is, is close enough aligned to the matter. So this is what we're going to also do. There is, on the basis of contesting title, sufficient reason to prepare a unique ecclesiastical deed process purely for court based on contesting of title. Now, the presumption here is that you have sent off the ecclesiastical deed to vital statistics. That's the one thing I would say. So this is an additional deed but a deed nonetheless geared towards those that are facing um, court action. And the reason I'm raising this is that it will then uh, be very specific in its structure as contesting personal jurisdiction, territorial jurisdiction of the private courts, of the private guild and the private laws. So again, I'm hoping to have that available over the next week which may not help those that are already underway, but will certainly help those that are coming up and thinking, how do I use these tools to best effect when I'm facing a particular court matter? So that will be coming up. And on court articles, I want to bring to your attention some continual updates in that section on the homepage of one heaven.org, which I'm just going to myself now. So I'm referring to the section, how to succeed at court. And before I get into it, I just want to say one thing. I understand the words how to succeed at court sound provocative. They are, <clears throat> deliberately so. And some may interpret that that is a claim that uh, we're saying how to win a court. We're not. We're not saying uh, that success in this case is winning. No one, can, no one can promise you that if you follow these steps, you'll win. What we're saying is success in a private court of a private guild using private laws can be improved through knowledge of those facts how the laws are formed, how to conduct oneself with honour in that system. Now, in my last call, I spent a substantial amount of time on this subject and I think it's worth raising again because I know one of the biggest differences you will find between what we are discussing and what many other people are doing is this question of honour. Unfortunately, there has been a prevailing belief that if you ignore, if you reject, if you protest, if you abstain, then you are standing strong. No. If you do those things, you are making the job of the private guild with the private bar and their private laws easy. That's why they promote false information because if you have any knowledge in the law, they do not want you in their court. They don't want you there. They want you to not attend. They want you to have an arrest warrant put out for you because you refuse to come. They want you to be aggressive. They want you to be confrontational. They want you to stand there and say, I do not consent. I will not do a single thing. Rather than, I comply under necessity and therefore I do not consent. In other words, I will comply with honour but I do not consent as I comply under necessity, which completely wrecks the game of you have no choice. 
So the court examples, which are listed there as a new section under how to succeed a court, give some examples, some 